saying this government has told a lie is like, well, <laughs> it's like saying the sky is blue. Um, you know, it's not necessarily you, you have to look up and even check for yourself. It's just become an almost well accepted fact that this government is almost lying on a continuing basis. But much of their lies, however, are centered around pretty much false beliefs. And particularly, as we've seen and we're, we're about to get to, is pretty Patel. Because two of the big current bills going through Parliament are pretty much, shall we say, her brainchild. And pretty much probably going to form the foundations for her to one day run for the Prime Ministerial Office. The first one, of course, is the policing bill. And it turns out, surprise, surprise, she didn't even consult the Police Federation about these powers. Not only that, it turns out, in her asylum bill, which again is meant to tackle the threat of modern slavery, doesn't even contain any accurate data about modern slavery in Britain. Who, who would have guessed? But of course, these are all about looking tough. And that is what the aim of those bills were. And I think, it is, you know, even when you had recently Pretty Patel at a deportation place with a blazer on saying Home Secretary, it was very clear that that was a PR event for her to go forward and to be able to essentially establish herself as a potential, shall we say, future PM. That is her plan much like these two bills are designed to essentially prop up that campaign when, shall we say, the time comes when Boris leaves, because he will leave sooner or later. So, let's get into, shall we say, more lies that the government is telling. So, but before we do jump into that, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, as well as one of the link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can indeed buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way, and on with the show. So, this comes from The Guardian. Oh, sorry, no, The Observer, sorry. And the title is, Pretty Patel misled MPs over plans for... A crackdown over over protest crack crackdown plans <laughs> when I can say it. <laughs> ah, so Pretty Patel is under fresh pressure after being accused of appearing to have misled Parliament on proposed powers to crack down on protests, and by separately issuing a statement on her asylum bill that does not even seem to be supported by evidence. Both interventions have uh, have come from the Home Secretary. But they were used to justify some of the most controversial aspects of her bills on which policing and the asylum system, which have both been criticised and either uh, un uh, undemocratic or cruel. Both developments urge de uh, are urged days after Patel was accused by England footballer uh, Tyrone, uh, Tyrone, uh, uh, Tyrone Mings of stoking the fire for racist abuse of his teammates after she demissed after she dismissed taking the knee as gesture politics. During a, Mar a 15th of March parliamentary debate on the uh, contentious police, crime and sentencing and courts bill, Priti Patel said that she had worked closely with the Police Federation, which represents the interests of over 130,000 officers uh, when during the, during the legislative uh, proposal. She said... We worked with our brave police officers to do the most difficult jobs. This is why I've worked closely with the Police Federation in developing the bill, she said, and told the Commons. However, a Freedom of Information Act response reveals that she did not even consult the Federation, even on the most controversial aspects of the bill. And of course, plans to limit protests, which have triggered demonstrations across the UK. The Federation response states... We did not provide a written submission, nor were we consulted on issues of protest-related like, protest related legislation. Gary Collier, the Liberty Advocate Director, said, The Home Secretary's assertion is disingenuous and leaves serious questions on whether Parliament has been misled. Patel is also facing other questions over attempts to justify her nationality and borders bill, 
which has been criticized for exclusively and cruelty to an asylum to being to, to asylum seekers and will reduce support for victims of human trafficking. On the 20th of March, the Home Office issued a statement claiming, quote, an alarming rise in people being abused in our, our modern slavery system by posing as victims in order to prevent their removal and enable them to stay in the country. The official statement was initially leaked to the Sun and was supported by a quote from Patel that said, our generous safeguards for victims are being rampantly abused by child rapists and people who throws, pose a threat to national security and failed asylum seekers with no right to be here. Her comments were then used to help push for sweeping changes to the system of identifying and protecting victims of tra trafficking. Yet, another Freedom of Information response to queries by EPCAT UK reveals that the Home Office's modern slavery unit could not provide data for child rapists, national security threats, or even failed asylum seekers referred to in the modern slavery system since 2017. The response clarifies that it would need to trawl cases for to, to trawl case files to try and complete the data, suggesting a complete lack of existing data for the claims made by Patel and the Home Office. Uh, Patrick de Kerr, EPCAT's uh, chief executive, said, It is absolutely shocking to have to rely on an FOI request to get behind to the truth of a policy that will impact over 10,000 potential victims identified last year alone. And many provisions are completely unnecessary, cruel, and, and clearly baseless. These are serious questions about the evidence and the basis for these measures in a bill that is easily the biggest setback in recent history to survivors of modern trafficking. Sam Grant, the head of the policy campaigns unit on human rights organization Liberty, which also supported a Freedom of Information Request, request Acts on the policing bill, along with the environmental group Friends of the Earth, said that this bill has triggered mass protests and almost universal opposition, including from ex-police chief who say that it threatens, the, who threatens democracy. The fact that the policing bodies weren't even consulted shows how determined those in power are to, to stifle dissent. Danny Gross, the campaigner at Friends of the Earth, said, The government even didn't even consult the police themselves, let alone anyone widely about these plans to cl clamp down on peaceful protests, which is, after all, a fundamental British right. We have to ask why this was. A Home Office spokesperson said that any suggestion that Patel had misled Parliament on the policing bill was completely baseless. They said she referred to working with the Police Federation when discussing measures that will most impact their members. When asked to respond, the Federation declined, although the FAI response does elaborate that the organization's head, John Apter, told the Parliament Committee three days after Patel's claims on, uh, to MPs on the 15th of March that his organization had not been consulted on the part of the bill relating to crackdowns on protest. And regarding claims about the asylum bill, which, is, uh, which had its second reading in the Commons on Monday, the Home Office said, our asylum system is broken and open to abuse. This is supported by evidence including published statistics by the Home Office analysis to suggest otherwise is completely wrong. We will not tolerate those including child rapists and those who pose a threat to national security and failed asylum seekers who have no right to be here or those who attempt to divide resources away from genuine victims. So, what a surprise. Um, the government is indeed lying. And like I say, to, to start there at the end, we know through a Freedom of Information request, request Act that that information does not exist to support the bill. Once again, saying that the asylum system is failed or broken is a very Trumpian effect to essentially say something is broken when, again, they don't go on to talk about if it is broken, what is broken, or even how they intend to fix it. And, of course, this has resulted in being becoming incredibly very cruel and directly targeting asylum seekers and even genuine victims of modern slavery. You know, um, and, of course, this is all coming from Pretty Patel, which, again, is, is, is shocking, to say the least. But... I, again, I, it doesn't surprise me because, once again, the, the Tory party is becoming very, very nasty. And if Patel ever became the leader of it, well, it will become a very, very nasty Tory party indeed.
So, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And, of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you to all those uh, for supporting me that way. And, of course, um, please do remember to wear a mask and maintain social distancing, because the virus is still very much out there. So, as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time.